What is up, my LS Crazed Amigos? It's your boy, Terry. Speaking from the garage shop once again. Here to offer you some more Big Bang for the Buck product and info. Yeah, you see, I'm getting it in. I'm uh, removing the old seam seal off the firewall. So, you know, like I see that there's a little surface rust, you know, trying to get all that stuff out before I metal prep it and sand it down and then metal prep and uh, get it going, you know? Because like I said, we're moving on this transmission, but we're not going to talk about that today. Ah, what we're going to talk about today is the T56, once again. All right. A couple weeks ago, I put out a video about T56, and then a, week before, a couple weeks before that, I put another video out. Uh, so I got a lot of questions about that, and most common asked questions of the second video is, because I mentioned gearing about the T56s and everything, the most common asked questions was like, could you explain what you're talking about when you say it? A 2.97 2 or a 1 to 1, you know, could you please explain what that is? And it's very simple, I will explain. Um, so let's go back to where we were with the T56. I put it back on the bench and we'll, we'll talk. For testing purposes, it's important to know the input shaft and the output shaft. The input shaft is where this where the transmission connects to the engine and the output shaft is where you have your drive, your drive, uh, your drive shaft that goes to your axles, which goes, which powers the wheels. Now this is the front of the transmission. You usually have a, a bell housing that mates up to the, the back of the engine. Now this is a throwout bearing, and well, we're not going to talk about this today. This is a different time and a different video, right? So now here's your input shaft. Now this usually goes through. Uh, a clutch and then a flywheel and then right here you have a pilot bearing that's inside of the the crankshaft all right and so that's how it works now what i did for testing purposes what i did was i marked to show the gearing i marked because this is stationary this does not move i marked a tab on the throwout bearing and i put a piece of tape on the input shaft and on the back what i did was I marked the output shaft. This is the output shaft. You see, now this, a drive shaft would go through here, yoke, and then it goes to the drive shaft, it goes through. You ever look on the bottom of a truck and you see that thing that spins? That's your drive shaft, and it connects to the rear axle, which goes to the wheels, and that's where your power gets from. That's why they say horsepower at the wheel. So between here and the axle, you lose a lot of power. No, not a lot, but you lose some power, so that's why they say power at the rear, rear wheels. All right, so I marked it with a little Sharpie, you can see it, and I marked it with a representing 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, which will show you when I turn this one time, the relationship to this. So let's put the, let's put the transmission in first gear. Right now it's in neutral, so let me stand up, move it over, there we go. So it's in first gear now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this thing until this does a full revolution. Now remember, it's 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. So what I'll do is I'll shout out full turn, full turn twice. And then on the, on the input shaft, it should be a little past the halfway mark for 266 gear. So let's begin. All right, ready? That's one. That's two. All right, now, when this thing, when, when the output shaft is a full revolution, now, right now, it's 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock on the output shaft, on the input shaft, 12 o'clock on the, on the mark. So now, once I go a full turn, a half turn, it should go a little past half. So let's do it to get it to the full. So I'm looking, I'm looking, it's right there. All right, right about right there. That's a full turn on the output shaft. Let me show you something. Past the halfway mark, all right? So this is where it ended. So that's a little bit past half. So this is a 266 first gearing. Now if it was a 299, a 297, it probably would be up in here, close to a full third revolution. All right, so now that's how first gear works. It's a 266 and Second gear, let's see, hmm, 20, 20 right there. Second gear is a 178. So it's gonna be a little bit different, but not too much more. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna concentrate 
on the fourth gear. Fourth gear is one to one, meaning when this input shaft spins one time, the output shaft spins one time. So let's begin with the test. All right, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Okay, I'm gonna spin this one time. 12 o'clock, right there. So it's one to one. All right, so that's what I mean when I say one to one. When I say one to one, that's one to one. Most, if not all, T56s are a one to one transmission. We're gonna skip fifth gear, which is a 0.74, and we're gonna go straight to the sixth gear, which is a 0.50. I got it in sixth gear, all right? Now, the output shaft, the input shaft, uh, a half a revolution should equal a whole revolution in sixth gear on the output shaft. Basically, so if I turn this rotation, one rotation, this is gonna spin twice. So let's begin, all right? So I'm gonna spin this a half a revolution. Right about right there. There you go. Look at that, all right? So half the revolution, full revolution here, all right? So let's keep on going. And from my angle, that's about a full revolution right there. Right there. That's a full revolution. Two full revolutions. So when you hear a 0.50, that means the input shaft is spinning one revolution and the output shaft is spinning two. So with a T56, as well as any other transmission, think of it like a five-speed bicycle. You remember those five-speed bicycles that you used to have? I used to have a Schwinn Stingray, you know, too, you know, with the gear shift right in the middle and all that, and you know, it's to rake the, rake the handlebars all the way up so you can pull wheelies all day long. Yeah. Anyways, think of it as a five-speed uh, bicycle. You remember when you put it in first gear, you were able to pedal, pedal uphill, you know, all day long, and you have to go to the second gear, right? And then you go to the third gear. And then this, as you go up, it was just a little bit, a tad bit harder, and, but yet you would gain more speed. Now, remember when you just start off in fifth gear? If you start off in fifth gear, it's really hard to pedal, really hard to struggle until you get it moving and then you're able to go. So just think of a transmission like that. All it is is just a series of gears that with your shifter, you move and you just shift them in sequence and that's it. Because if you try to start off in third gear, it's gonna be like the same thing with your bike. You know, you start in third gear, it's kinda of hard. But with a transmission, it's just gonna probably just cut the engine off, read the bog. All right? I hope this clears it up. If you have any more questions, you know how to reach me because Terry is not a hard brother to find. And I wanna take the opportunity to tell you at this point to say thank you. I appreciate all the love and the questions and the comments. So please, if you have any more, you know how to reach me. I'm not a hard brother to find. But I wanna give a shout out to you, to all you guys. Thank you guys for watching. And I'm looking at the clock on the wall. It always moves. It always moves. Where is it? It's over there. Or should I say ceiling? I'm going to head on off. And I'm going to do some more videos and put work back on this car and get this thing running because I'd like to try to get it running before the end of, the, end of this year. All right. So as always, as always, please be easy. And I will catch you guys real soon. Thank you. Schwinn.